Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 853rd battle that I've put onto our Brotherhood YouTube channel. And just to say, today we're going to concentrate on morale. We're going to have a serious look on uh, how important morale is to your army. Okay, as you'll see, this battle was fought on a custom map hosted by Brotherhood member Mars. We're just going to have a quick look at this map. Very unusual map here. You'll see that it's got a lot of ups and downs on it. Very, um, what I would call, undulating ground this map has got. If you go all the way over here, you'll see it's kind of um, fought on a coast, if you like, here. As you can see, there's some palm trees there. And uh, as I say, it's, uh, it's a custom map supplied by Brotherhood member Mars. And as I say, if you notice here, it is very undulating the ground here. A lot of ups and downs, which I find is quite interesting on a battle map here. Trying to, you know, trying to get to the best position on the map there. As I say, if you look over here, you'll see there's um, a big rock feature there as well. Whether the enemy team would be fighting around that or not, I don't know. But uh, as I say, I think it's quite an interesting custom map here. If you notice, those of you that watch us regularly, you'll know that we're, uh, we're starting to fight on more custom maps now. Maps that uh, we might not have fought on before. Okay, our first teammate is Brotherhood member Mad King. Now, Mad King has got the Sassanid faction. He's got 12 archers, 4 camels, and 4 cavalry. Okay, yeah, 12 archers here. And these are the desert archers, okay? Now, as you notice there, they've got no armor, so their defense won't be very good, but they are long-range archers, okay? So, as I say, defense pretty poor, but they are long-range archers, and they can be quite effective. Over here, you'll notice, if we have a look at his cavalry, you'll see that he's got armored camel riders there, okay? These guys got good specifications. They move a bit slower than cavalry, but uh, they've got good specifications, as I said. You can see they're armored from head to toe, and they're uh, they're pretty good units there. And they were, and then you've got his Sassanat, Sassanid uh, cataphracts there. Okay, and these guys are really tough. I got, I think something they got something like a 33, 34 defense. These guys, so uh, they are pretty elite cavalry, and it'll be interesting to see how Mad King deals with them. But as I say here, no infantry. So he's got 12 archers, 8 cavalry. Remember in Barbarian Invasion we allow 8 cavalry max, but no infantry, okay? And, all, and just to say, the Sassanid infantry are Sugdian warriors with effective against armor maces, but he's decided not to bring any infantry. Will that be important later on in the battle? I guess we'll have to see. Our next teammate is brother member JGP, who's got the Romano-British faction. Now he's got 3 archers, 1 monk unit, 10 infantry and 6 cavalry. Quick look at his infantry there. And you'll see that these guys here, the British Legionnaires, there, they throw pilers like Roman troops do. And this infantry, make no mistake, is pretty solid infantry. They are really good. In fact, this whole faction is really good, except for their archers. Their archers, if you notice here, you'll see no armor. They don't wear any armor, and they're only medium range. So, um, of course, they're, um, that's the Achilles heel of this faction, if you like, is the weak archers. Um, and in this game, there are a lot of elite archers. So the elite archers can easily outrange these guys, and they can kill them quite easily. And then the elite enemy archers can then concentrate their archer fire onto the infantry. So, as I say, the archers are the Achilles heel of this faction. And then we go on to the infamous Grail Knights. Now, if you notice there, there's only 32 in a unit. Most cavalry units have got 54. These only got 32, and that's because of the fantastic specifications of this unit here. They are, there's a close-up of them there. Okay, so these are the Grail Knights. They've got big attacking specifications, really good overall specifications there, and they are in the elite cavalry bracket. Now here you'll see he's bought a monk unit here. This will increase the morale to his army. But as I say, we're going to talk about morale seriously a little bit later on in this battle. Okay, but to bring a morale given unit is good in Barbarian Invasion. Okay. Um, our next teammate is RV Cornovi. Now Cornovi has got seven uh, Plumbartorite, three Comatotenses, three Spearmen, and five Cavalry. Okay, now the Plumbartorite here, which we're going to have a look at, 
These guys throw effective against armor metal darts. Okay, and they've got loads of ammunition. And the firepower that these Plumbartori can bring to the battlefield. I mean, enemy units literally melt in front of them with the firepower that they just put onto the enemy units there. And I think they've got something like 15, at least 15 ammunition each. 15 of those effective against uh, metal uh, armor darts there. And they can be extremely effective there. And here you'll see that... Uh, our uh, Cornovoy has got some Eagle units, got three Eagle units as well. Remember, those are morale giving units, but as I say, we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, so that's a pretty good army there. And if you notice here, here's a unit you don't see very often the Legio Lanciari. Now, these are anti cavalry spearmen, as you can see, and uh, they are pretty solid spearmen as well. And look how well armored they are. So their defense is good, and those, uh, those spears are very effective as well. And then his cavalry are the Equitai Clibonari. Okay, now if you notice here, they carry effective against armor maces. And most barbarian invasion players would class these pound for pound as the best cavalry in the game. Now, bearing in mind that barbarian invasions have got a lot of elite cavalry units, for these guys to be rated as the best cavalry in the game, that just goes to show how good they are. They've got something like a 34 defense. Um, and they're so tough you know most cavalry you charge into enemy infantry and pull them out well these guys are so tough you can leave them fighting enemy infantry with those effective against armor maces and they do really good okay um our last teammate is myself spartan commander now i've got six com comet tenses four plumbartori five auxiliary palatina spearmen and three cavalry okay so this is um my roman army here just have a quick look there you'll see there you've got the plumbartori as i say these guys can be absolutely devastating but i've only got four of them okay and there's a reason for that as i say we're going to talk about this a little bit later on four plumbartori there all right and i've got these spearmen here these auxiliary palatina okay these are really tough spearmen here um, and if you notice how well armoured they are. Now, the Triarii on Rome Total War, the anti-cavalry Roman spearmen, even fully upgraded, they're really poor. And I've seen them rout um, when they've been hit head-on by cavalry. But these guys are really tough, these Auxiliary Palatina. Um, I think they've got something like a 29 defence. Look how well armoured they are. And they seem to hold really well. And if you put them into shield war formation, that makes them even more tough. Um, for enemy to try and break through. So not only are they good anti-cavalry troops, but they are hold against enemy infantry as well. Really good troops there. If you notice here, I've only got three cavalry because this particular Roman army is very infantry based. If you notice here, I've gone for the Sarmatian Auxiliary Cavalry. I find this cavalry to be very effective, uh, very efficient, and also they're fast moving as well. Okay, so there's my Roman army. As I say, we're going to have a little closer look at it a bit later on when we talk about morale. So there's our team. And as I say, we are going to have a serious talk about morale later on in this battle. And here is the other team. We have Brotherhood member Man 2. Now, Man 2's got the Sarmatian faction. Now, he's got two horse archers, six foot archers, six infantry, and five cavalry. Now, there's his horse archers there. Okay, these are fast moving. And on Barbarian Invasion, horse archers can be very, very important because most factions are very susceptible to archer damage. So they are very um, useful here. And there's a foot archers as well. Okay, the Sarmatian uh, Virgin foot archers got a long range, but uh, they haven't got much defense there. And he's gone for the elite infantry there, the Step Horde Chosen Warriors. Just let to draw your attention to their swords. Can you see they've got curved ends? Of the swords there so these swords are more for slashing than stabbing be interesting to see how well he uses them and then he's got the um, elite cavalry here as you can see there at the Sarmatian noble cavalry they've got a good charge bonus there so it'd be interesting to see how man 2 uses that faction during the course of the battle their next teammate is a brotherhood member Punisher now Punisher's got two archers eight axemen two berserkers and eight cavalry remember in barbarian invasion we allow eight cavalry because there's so many um elite cavalry in the game 
There's his archers. Now he's gone for the medium range, well armored archers. You've got two lots of archers. You've got the Lombard archers who haven't got any armor but got long range. Or you've got these guys that are well armored but only medium range. And as you can see, he's gone for the well armored archers with just medium range uh, there. So as I say, you've got two choices of archers in this faction. And he's gone for that particular um, archer unit there. And here you'll see that he's gone for the Burgundian Lancers. Now, as you can see, they're heavy cavalry, but they've got the speed of light cavalry. So you get a combination there of heavy cavalry, but uh, with light cavalry speed. So they're quite uh, quite handy units to, uh, to have in your army. And at the rear here, you'll see that he's got chosen axemen. Now, remember... Those chosen axemen have got effective against armor axes and can cut wide swathes through heavily armored troops like Roman infantry. Okay, plus there he's got two berserker units. Now these Lombard berserkers, they've got big attacking specifications. They bring a big fear factor as well, but the weapons they carry are not effective against armor. Okay, those double-handed swords are not effective against armor, but they've got big attacking specifications. As I say, big fear factor as well. Their next teammate is Brotherhood member Schemer. Now Schemer has got two berserkers, 10 infantry, four horse archers, and four cavalry, and unusually has got the rebel faction. We don't see this faction used on Barbarian Invasion much. Okay, so this is a rebel faction here, and you'll see that he his infantry there, the mercenaries, um, Valorana, I think, Veteranana, I think there, and they throw pilers, um, and they're really good, solid infantry, these guys are. Veterana, that's it. There, they're very, uh, very good infantry there. And then he's got there. Can you see he's got the Sugdian warriors, which are actually um, Sassanid infantry there. But of course, because this is a rebels faction, and they carry effective against armor maces there. Okay. And then he's got the uh, berserkers here. Now these are the hounds of Kulan berserkers. Now their specifications are not as high as other berserkers in this game, but they've got one thing that other berserkers don't have. They've got effective against armor maces, and on a personal basis, because they paint their bodies purple, which they did deliberately to scare enemy troops. I just wonder whether these guys have got a higher fear factor than other berserkers in this game who don't paint their bodies. Remember back in the day, these guys used to paint their bodies deliberately to try and scare um, enemy troops. So I wonder whether um, the extra fear factor has been factored into the game. And then you'll notice here that he's got Grail Knights, okay? The same as from the Romano-British faction here. Remember, 32 men in these units because they're so elite. Okay, so let's say with the Rebel faction here, he's got a good selection of troops. We don't see the Rebels use that much. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good, solid army there of Schemer. And, of course, um, he's bought four horse archers here. He got a mix, a bit mixed up with the rules. We only allowed two, but he's bought four here. And these guys are elite Hun archers. So make no mistake there, he's got a, a pretty good, solid rebel army there. And their last teammate is the host of this game, Brotherhood member Mars. Now, Mars got four archers, ten plumbartari, and six Equitai Clibonaris, and this archer, this Eastern Archer unit here. This is a well armored, good defense archer unit with long range, very elite archers there. And then he's gone for the cheaper archers here, which are mid range, and as you can see, wear no armor, so their defense will be pretty poor. And then he's got the Plumbartaroi there that throw those effective against armored darts. And there you are, he's got his Equitai Clibonari cavalry. As I say, most Barbarian Invasion players class these as the best cavalry in the game. So there's the enemy team. It's got the potential to be an absolutely cracking battle, and I really hope you enjoy it. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at my um, battle formation here, my Roman battle formation of this uh, infantry-based army. If you notice at the front of the battle formation here, you'll see that I've got my Auxilera Palatina anti-cavalry spearmen there. Okay, now these guys um, are really, really good um, infantry against cavalry and infantry. And as I say, the Triarii on Rome Total War, even fully upgraded, I've seen them get hit head-on by enemy cavalry and rout on impact. Okay, but these anti-cavalry spearmen are really serious spearmen there. And they will stop cavalry 
um, attacks them, especially in shield wall formation. Now, if I get any units come around the flank of my battle formation, I just turn units to face the threat there. And if it's cavalry, I'll even turn one of those um, spear units there to face the threat. If they come around the other side, as I say, I turn units to face the threat there, and we'll bring that uh, spear unit across there to block um, any attack there. As I say, here you can see the Eagle units. Now, do you remember we talked, we were going to talk seriously about um, morale in this battle here. If you notice there, I've got the Plumbartroy at the back there, and I've got my Eagle units at the front, and there's my three cavalry at the back. But as I say, we were going to talk seriously about morale here. Okay, so when we first started to play Barbarian Invasion, we used to suffer big mass routes, which we couldn't understand. Okay, mass, it just used to be, the armies just used to mass route. And then as we started to play more, we realized that it's all about morale on Barbarian Invasion. The more morale tr uh, boosting troops you bring, the better, uh, and it stops the mass routes. Now, if you notice in this Roman army, I've got six eagle units, okay? Now, these eagle units don't just um, give morale boost to other units um, in this army. But these Eagle units give morale boost to each other as well. So if you can imagine there, all those six Eagle units are morale boosting all the troops around them, plus giving morale boost to each other as well. Okay, so this is very, very important in, in Rome Total War or Barbarian Invasion, but especially in Barbarian Invasion. These morale boosting troops are absolutely essential, in my opinion okay uh, with a roman army now later on in this battle and uh, the re reason i'm talking about this is later on in this battle this battle formation is sorely tested and i mean that you'll see what i mean later on in the battle now will those six eagle units with the morale boost and ability that they've all got as i say not just to other units but to each other will this battle formation hold or will it rout okay that's going to be a, a really this as i say this battle formation is going to be really tested later on okay so um all the units here will be getting the, that morale boost from those six eagle units and it'll be interesting to see how well they do but as i say this is a serious look at what morale boosting units can do in battle and I hope you find it really interesting because morale is very important as generals down the ages have realized okay at this very very early stage of the battle here you'll see that a schemer is bringing his horse archers around the flank of my infantry battle formation there as we know schemer can be a very aggressive attacking player but also good tactical player as well if you notice here my ally cornovi is taking his equitai clibonari cavalry over to the right flank there possibly with a view to countering those horse archers there and you notice there i'm moving my three fast moving cavalry over towards those horse archers as well wouldn't surprise me a schemer back them off which is what he's doing there you can see he's now retreating those uh, horse archers there Okay, now you'll see here that Mars has moved his elite eastern um, archers forward there. Okay, but but as I say, these Equitai Clibonari cavalry are reckoned to be the best cavalry in the game. And their defense is so high that they don't suffer hardly any casualties from even elite archers shooting at them. Make no mistake here, you've got horse archers and those elite eastern archers. Um, archers there roman archers shooting into them and they're probably not going to suffer a single casualty as i say i think their defense is something like 34 or 35 defense so um that was a nice move there of cornovi moving his cavalry over there to take the archer fire knowing that his cavalry are not going to suffer any casualties from those um, arrows just look at those arrows coming in on them there look. you can see from those horse archers there the uh, the arrows shooting into them but not, hasn't caused them a single casualty there that's how tough these equitai clibonaris are okay you can see here our assassinated ally now is moving his um, infantry over here if you remember he was right on the other flank so he's just run his troops all the way over here and you can see his archers there he's moving over if you notice here um, on this particular map you'll see that we've got slightly higher ground here um, so that's good for us. As Mars hosted on the other side, we'd like to say thanks very much to the host <laughs> to give us the slightly higher ground there. 
Um, see if it makes a difference a bit later on in the battle. Here you'll see Cornovo moving his Roman army over towards my army here. Now over here you'll see that Sneaky Man 2 is slowly moving his archers, his, his horse archers, round our flank here. Probably hoping that moving them slowly we might not notice them. And he'd probably like to get in behind us there with those horse archers if he could. Okay, so as I say, you can see the Equitai Clibonaris there of Cornovi. Um, soaking up the enemy archer fire and not suffering a single casualty from them here. If you notice here, I'm moving my fast moving cavalry towards those horse archers there just to really chase them away. I know I won't be able to catch them, but uh, it's just to chase them away really. And what I should have done is put this cavalry unit in open order so that it suffer less casualties from archer fire. Because remember, those enemy archers can turn in the saddle and shoot arrows at um, chasing enemy cavalry there. Okay, so uh, I needed to put them in open order there. But as I say here, you can see now that uh, Cornovoi has brought his entire infantry over to the right flank. And just look at these 12 desert, Sassanid desert archers of Mad King there. Imagine the firepower that they're gonna bring to the battlefield, but remember also that Mad King did not bring any infantry. He's relying on 12 cavalry units and, uh, sorry, 12 archer units and eight cavalry units. Okay, so he's got no infantry. Could this prove pivotal, especially towards the end of the battle? I guess we just have to see. But as I say, at the moment with 12 um, long range archers that he's got there, he could cause a lot of trouble to enemy troops there. If you notice there's a good move here. He's retreating those archers a little bit back because they did look a little bit exposed. But of course, he's got his eight elite cavalry there ready to cover those archers. If you notice at the back of our um, battle formations there, you'll see that my um, cavalry are trying to chase down a lot of those horse archers or chase them away. This is what I should have done with my cavalry is put them in open order, in wide open order formation there so that they uh, kind of cover more ground there in that open wide formation there and of course as I say in open order as any unit on either Rome Total War or Barbarian Invasion they will suffer less casualties um, in that open order formation there so as I say there you can see how wide that battle formation is now that cavalry formation is now so like I say it covers more ground and kind of uh, tries to hoover up those horse archers there so I'm just trying to chase them away because they would be a bit of a nuisance in behind us there. Okay. Let's just pause the game for a second here. So as I say, Cornovo's brought his entire Roman army over to this right flank now. Okay. And he was, um, I think, in the uh, the right centre there. But he's moving over to the right flank. Now if you notice here, can you see that Mars is moving his Roman army here? Okay, remember, he's, his arm is full of plumbarteri with those massive um, firepower there, and he's heading towards our allies' army there. If you notice here, he's heading towards JGP's um, Romano-British army there. Now, make no mistake, Mars would love to get close to him so that he could use his massive firepower to almost destroy um, poor old JGP's army there. Okay, so what I need to do is move my red Roman army over towards... JGP to support him there because in these battles really it's best for Rome to face Rome because as I say of the firepower that um, Mars has got. I say Mars has got 10 plumbarteries there with those effective against armor darts that they throw. As I say if he starts throwing them into a JGP's army he could absolutely decimate them there. So uh, that's why we're trying to get my army over there. It wouldn't surprise me if Mars actually backed his army off now seeing my army move towards him on higher ground okay as i say it wouldn't surprise me to see mars move his army back there a little bit there and there you are you can see mars moving his army back a bit there now that my red roman army has got over there to face his army and um as a keep an eye on that to roman army of mars is there as i say those plumbars right in his army could absolutely decimate my allies army um, if they get into range. Over here on our left flank, you'll see some of Mantu's cavalry and Punisher's axemen there moving around on our left flank. Good tactical move there, trying to stretch our team um, there, I think, by uh, moving around that left flank. And you'll see JGP's Romano British infantry and cavalry there, ready to repel that attack if it comes in from the left. 
And over here on our right flank, you'll see that Schemer's moving some more of his horse archers round there. And it looks like he's moving his infantry round there as well. So it'll be interesting to see what he's going to do with his infantry. We know he can be an attacking player. Okay, at this stage of the battle here, you'll see that those horse archers are trying to attack uh, Mad King's archers there. And you'll see that Schemer has brought his infantry battle formation up onto the higher ground there. Here you'll see a lot of Mad King's archers have been taken out. You see a heck of a lot of them there. Probably taken out by enemy archers look, and horse archers as well. Combination there. As I say, enemy foot archers and enemy horse archers there. But as I say, you can see here Schemer bringing his infantry formation up onto the hill, up onto that slope there. It'd be interesting to see if Mad King's going to try and stop him. Over here, you'll see I've got my army here facing two enemy armies. There. You can see the Sarmatians and Mars's Roman army there. As I say, I'd like to get in range of those... Um, infantry the enemy infantry there because um i could throw a lot of pilers and my, pl my plumbarter i could hit them as well right over here on the right flank you'll see that mad king has charged his sassanid cavalry in a downhill charge onto schemer's infantry and through doing that look he's actually activated the hounds of kulan berserkers there if you notice see those two units with their banners red banners flashing that's the two and berserker units have now been activated there by that cavalry charge by mad king okay so those berserker units are now completely out of the control of their general and they'll just chase after the nearest enemy unit okay so that was a nice downhill cavalry charge by mad king there um activating those berserkers you can see that cornovo is bringing some of his cavalry over as well possibly with the thought of downhill cavalry charge onto schemer's infantry but then he decides to back his cavalry off my guess is that schemer will now continue to move his infantry up onto the higher part of the slope there but over here it looks like cornovo is going to concentrate on the berserkers of course those two hounds of kulan berserkers are now isolated here they're doing a good job against the cavalry but here comes some more heavy cavalry and bang as they smash in there oh my gosh they literally rode over those berserkers there i think there's one berserker left there and he's just been killed he didn't get thrown up in the air so that is now both the hounds of kulan berserkers have now been taken out so that was a nice uh, cavalry charge by Cornovoy and Mad King there. But you can see that Schemer's now got his infantry basically on top of the slope there. And you can see Mars is assisting him with cavalry. Now over here you'll see that I've spotted the danger on our right flank. And I'm now taking my Red Roman army over there to try and... Um, uh, try and neutralise that attack coming in on our right flank. Okay, you can see them now. They've got, they've grabbed the higher ground. Now you can see clearly that they've got the higher ground. We kind of ceded the higher ground to them there, and that uh, infantry and cavalry of the enemy now have taken a good solid foothold on the top of the higher ground there. Here you can see um, Man Two's cavalry. You can see I'm chasing them with my cavalry there. I'm hoping they're going to turn and charge into my cavalry, and then I'm hoping that Mad King will charge his. Um, Sassanid cavalry into them as well which he looks like he's going to do and it wouldn't surprise me if Mantu backed his cavalry off seeing that Sassanid cavalry coming towards him which he's doing now right here you can see my red Roman army has now reached where Schema's army is okay so there you can see that my army is now setting up in front of Schema's army there but you can see the enemy troops starting to mass around my army. Okay, let's pause the game for a second here. So as I say, we were talking, when we talked about this battle, we talked about seriously looking at morale. Now you can see, as I say, the best cavalry in the game with a slight downhill charge bonus there. Those Equitai Clibonaris of Mars going to smash into the flank of my infantry. Make no mistake about that. Okay, you can see Schemer's cavalry and infantry here going to smash into the front of my battle formation there. And over on the left flank here, you'll see Roman infantry. And I believe, if I remember correctly, there's a berserker in there as well. And these archers are shooting into the left flank of my battle formation as well. I'm pretty sure there was a berserker unit somewhere amongst those uh, troops that are coming in on my left flank. So as I say, we, we're talking seriously about morale here. 
Okay, and remember, I've got six eagle units in my battle formation. Now, there's my allies formed up behind me here. Okay, so at this stage of the battle, my army is going to be the kind of like the anchor of our team. I'm going to attract big enemy hits on my army here, and I'm hoping that, that will enable my allies to be able to take advantage of that and maybe move around the battlefield and hit tactical targets. But as I say... This is a morale-based army with six eagle units in it. Okay, six eagle units giving morale to all the troops and giving morale to each other as well. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn units here in anticipation of that enemy cavalry coming into my flank. Can you see there? And also going to turn one of my spear units. There you are. See how I've turned that auxiliary Palatina spear unit there? In anticipation of that cavalry going to charge into my flank okay so there, I've turned that spear unit there okay uh, anti-cavalry spear unit there to help deflect or neutralize uh, cavalry hit coming in there and I've turned two other units there to face the threat of that cavalry coming in on me okay make no mistake though those Equitai Clibonaroids as I say reckon to be the best cavalry in the game it's gonna slam into my flank I've got enemy troops, including those elite Grey o Knights, going to smash into the front of my units there. Okay, I've got my spearmen there ready to hopefully halt that. And here I've got enemy Roman troops coming in on my left flank. There you are, with a Berserker unit that has now been activated. So all those troops are going to hit my flank. Okay, so my, for all intents and purposes, my army is going to get smashed and crashed here. But will six Eagle units give enough morale for my army to hold or is my army just about ready to rout here i'm going to move my general see my general unit there i'm going to move him more into my battle formation here's my general there look i'm going to move him into the middle of my battle formation there to protect the general okay i don't want him exposed there to enemy hits but get ready for this as i say we're talking about morale here will six morale boosting eagle units hold right see that cavalry going into the front of my battle formation bang as it smashes in there and here comes all right here comes the equitoid clibonaroids with their downhill charge bonus watch the penetration and the impact and bang as they smash into my infantry there and also you'll see mars's infantry coming up on the left flank of my battle formation look at the penetration of those equitoid clibonaroid cavalry deep into my battle formation there Right, let's pause the game for a second. So you can see there that I'm being smashed from three separate sides. In fact, four sides, because they're coming in from behind me as well. So you've got all of Schemer's infantry and cavalry smashing into the front of my battle formation there. Oh my gosh. You've got the Equitai Clibonaroids coming in from the flank, and you've got Mars coming in from the left flank. And this is a good move by Mars. Not only is he attacking my flank, but he's putting units there to block any reinforcements that my allies might try and get over to me. So that's a nice move there by Mars. Nice blocking force there to stop any reinforcements getting to my Red Roman army. But look at my army being engulfed by enemy troops there. And yet, yet, my Red Roman army is still holding... But just look at the... I'm being hit by force from four sides there. You can see my Red Roman army is being hit from every direction there and still hold him. Okay, now you can see here Mad King's bringing his cavalry over to try and relieve the pressure off of my um, infantry. But there you are. Can you see more cavalry charging into my infantry formation there? Like I'm... Bang! As they smash in there. Oh my gosh. The enemy's intention here, obviously, is to take my army out. Make no mistake about that, they want to take my army out. As I say, I'm trying to act as an anchor for my team at the moment. I'm hoping that my allies will be able to take advantage of all these enemy troops attacking my troops. Oh my gosh, there's even more cavalry coming in, look. You can see even more cavalry, enemy cavalry charging in again. Oh my gosh, just look at all that cavalry coming in. Oh my gosh, I'm Bang! As they smash into my Roman troops. And yet still, look, my Roman troops still managing to hang on there. Even with that massive enemy cavalry and infantry attack. You can see Mad King using his Sassanid cavalry. You can see JGP's Grail Knights in there trying to relieve the pressure off my infantry. But you can see a lot of my units are routing. 
but I've still got units holding there even with that massive attack coming in on my infantry. As I say, Mad King Sassanid Cavalry and the Grail Knights of JGP are charging in there, trying to take uh, a bit of pressure off my infantry. So well done to JGP and Mad King there. But what we need now, I think, is Cornovoy's infantry to come over there as well to help, because I don't know how long my Roman army is going to hold here. You can see most of my units have been routed, but I'm still managing to hold on there with that morale-based infantry army. Okay, over here you'll see the um, Sarmatian infantry of Man 2 moving forward here as well. Plus, you've got the archers here that have been shooting into our troops all the time there. But the thing is, do you think that my morale-based Roman army can hold here, or do you think it's finally going to break? You can see all the... Uh, enemy troops there a lot of enemy troops are starting to rout now as i say well done to uh, mad king and a uh, jgp there you can see cornovo is starting to move some of his infantry and cavalry into the fray as well but make no mistake the target for the enemy team was my army they want to take my army out and that's what they tried to do there you saw the massive enemy um, infantry and cavalry coming into my um army there but that morale based army managed to hold there so very very pleased with that and it's just an example i just want to show you an example of how well a morale based army can hold so if you notice here i've got four units left right that's a 121 man unit reduced to 45 there okay there's a 121 man unit there reduced to 31 there's a Plumbartra unit from 81, I think, to 28. And my general unit, there's still got 60 men in, but that's a 121-man unit as well. And that's all the units I've got left, four units out of my entire army. Everything else has been routed and killed there, but I've still managed to, got f to get four units left there. So that is what a morale-based army can do there in, in the way that it held against those massive attacks there. If I didn't have all those eagle units in that army, my guess is that army would have routed almost on impact. But uh, there you can still see Roman, um, en sorry, enemy cavalry roaming the battlefield here. I still don't think they finish with my army. I think they want to take my army out because I remember them saying how tough my army was and how my army was the anchor of the team there. And I think that they really would like to take my army out if they could. Meanwhile, over here, you'll see the archers there of um mad king shooting at the enemy troops there you've got some of cornovoy's infantry protecting our left flank there from enemy troops so well done to cornovoy holding our left flank there with all his infantry um allowing um jgp and mad king to move their troops over here and hopefully chase the enemy troops away okay so there you, are, you can see both Mad King here. But here you can see Mars has still got a couple of his Equitoi Clibonaro units. And it wouldn't surprise me if he attacked my uh, what's left of my Roman army there. Because make no mistake, they really tried everything to hammer my army into submission there. And my units managed to hold there, as I say, with those six morale boosting eagle units within my army. So, uh, but that, I think that annoyed them. <laughs> I think that. That annoyed them a little bit that they couldn't take my army out. So they may well try again to finish my army off. You can see all my allies now are moving towards the bulk of the enemy troops here. And there's my troops at the left. Um, I think my general's still alive there. Um, but there's a lot of enemy troops here look, moving around the battlefield who may well still want to try and take out my army. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. Now I've got four extremely weakened units left there and uh, as i say the enemy target was to try and take me out right pause the game for a second here so as i say here you'll see all my allies cavalry and infantry are attacking the bulk of the enemy troops here looking to take them out and rout them there so well done to my teammates there they're they're charging forward there to take out the enemy troops and as you can see we've got a down slope advantage there against those enemy troops okay but i say over here I've got four extremely battle damaged units left and looking at the enemy troops around me it wouldn't surprise me if they did go to try and finish off my troops right there you, are. you can see Mars's cavalry those Equitoi Clibonari there charging in look they've charged in there you can see the Grail Knights 
I can see the Grail Knights there. There's another cavalry unit of Morris coming into my infantry. And there you can see the Grail Knights there. You can see the horse archers probably going to be all attacked there. You can see Mad King sending a cavalry unit over to try and help my infantry there. But my four battle damage infantry are being smashed and crowned by that enemy cavalry. And the enemy cavalry is going to charge. Oh my gosh, look at all the enemy cavalry ready to charge in to finish off my infantry. Oh my gosh, here it comes. And... Bang! As they smash into what's left of my infantry there. You can see Mad King's cavalry unit's been routed. Uh oh, one of my units has just been routed. Still, I'm holding on. I can't believe it. Still managing to hold on here, look. Oh my god, another unit of Mad King trying to help me there. Let he charges in there. Bang! Oh my gosh. Right, it's just my general unit left. That's all I've got left now. You can see the end. Oh my gosh. That's my general dead. That is my general dead. But still that one unit. Oh my gosh, that's it. My entire army has now been taken out. My entire army has now... I couldn't quite hold on there. You can see JGP bringing some of his Grail Knights over to help me there. But I just couldn't hold on long enough to survive. So my entire army now has been taken out. Okay? But I thought they did well. I thought uh, um, that was a good example of a morale-based army with six Eagle units in it how well it held but in the end there you go numbers did tell um, on what I had left there and my army has been completely routed so the enemy aim there to take my army out has been achieved by them so well done to them but as I say um, them attacking my units there has allowed my allies to rout the um, the rest of the enemy troops there so as I say I was trying to be um, an anchor and a target for the enemy troops there and hoping that my allies would be able to take advantage of that and it looks like they have so well done to my teammates there and you can see there I think the the enemy team have um, most of them have admitted defeat there you see those horse archers charging into those um, archers of Mad King there. But you can see Mad King has all attacked with his knife and ch chased those um, those units off. As I say, it looks like our team has um, <clears throat> has managed to go on to uh, to win the battle there. So as I say, if you look around the battlefield here, it is reasonably spread out here. You can see a lot of fighting here. This is where my allies were charging um, down the slope there against the enemy troops. So um, at this particular part of the battlefield there, we uh, managed to have a little bit of an advantage here. There's, of course, as we move up here, just look at all those um, archers of Mad Kings that were killed. And, of course, as we move here, we can see the mass of dead troops here. This is where uh, I think um, the toughest fighting was done here. The most intense part of the battlefield um, was just there. But as I say, if you look around the battlefield there, there's my general unit there, look. That's, uh, with only four men left in them there a general was killed so um, you can see there that uh, I thought as I say I thought this was um, a good example of a morale based army and how well it can hold there and how important morale is both in Rome Total War and Barbarian Invasion but morale seems to be even more important in Barbarian Invasion first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game there I thought everybody played well surprise it was a clear victory but uh, well done to my teammates for that. And the highest kills in the game goes to a Brotherhood member Mad King. Now remember, Mad King's Sassanid army were just 8 cavalry and 12 archers. He had no infantry in his army at all. And he got the highest kills by far. If you look there, he got the highest kills by far with 8 cavalry and 12 archers. Well done to Mars. He managed to get over 1,000 kills there. So well done to him. Well done to Schemer. He got less than a thousand kills, so he probably be a bit disappointed with his kills. But I thought he played well. Good tactical moves by him. A uh, well done to Punisher. He got less than a thousand, uh, thousand kills as well. But I thought he played well. Good aggressive moves by him. And well done to Man too as well. He got less than a thousand kills as well. But I thought he played well. So really well played, guys. That was uh, a really great battle there. And uh, thank you for targeting my army. <laughs> and as you can see. Kills, not very good there from my army. 
but then I was defensive. Remember both Rome Total War and Barbarian Invasion rewards attacking play with good kills. If you're defensive, you don't get a lot of kills there. But I thought that morale-based army um, was a good example of what a morale-based army can do on the battlefield there. And I hope you enjoyed seeing how well that army held against massive enemy attacks there. So I was very pleased with the way that army held um, there. Good, really good morale-based army there and um as you could see it did really well so um, that's what eagle units can do for you if you've got enough of them in your army so uh, as i say very pleased with that and uh, as i like say really well as i said well done to mad king highest kills in the game well done to jgp um got he didn't quite get a thousand kills but he played well with his uh, romano british army there i thought he did a good support and well done to rv cornovoy he didn't get a thousand kills, but look how many troops he got left. I think he what he only lost less than three hundred troops in the whole battle. Look how many troops he's got left there from him, from the men deployed, and he nearly got a thousand kills as well. So well done to RV uh, Cornovoy there. I thought he did really well. I was just going to say, um, please leave a comment or a thumbs up if you enjoyed this um, battle about uh, morale. I thought it was very interesting. Okay, Spartan Commander, saying bye for now.